Um, Dr. John Lott Jr. joining us on the show today. He's economist, an economist, world recognized expert on gun and crimes. He's with crimeresearch.org, has a numerous great articles out. So first off, um, Dr. Lott, thank you for your time. Welcome Thanks for back. coming on. Uh, nice. Good to talk to you again. Thanks for having me on. You bet. Let me start off with, I mean, we, we want to get into, we have like Venezuelan gangs taking over in Colorado um, and law enforcement telling us it's our imagination. Um, we've got all kinds of things happening here, but there was another um, school shooting. I think four people killed, nine injured at a school about an hour outside of Atlanta. And you already have a, a column up noting that once again, this is at a school where teachers are not able to carry guns. Is that right? Yeah, <clears throat> unfortunately, this was uh, another place where teachers were banned from having guns. Georgia is one of 20 states that allow people to allow teachers to carry guns. But the problem is um, you have to have the school board approve it. And there's only been a few school districts in Georgia that have approved, um, approved that. Uh, obviously, in this case, there was a uh, armed security officer that was there, a school resource officer. The, the thing is, uh, when you're dealing with somebody who's in uniform and readily identifiable as going to be the only person with a gun, uh, you give uh, the attackers some real tactical advantages uh, right. so they can look around to make sure that uh, – uh, you know, nobody, the person with the gun is, isn't around before they engage the attack, or they can move on to another part of the school to go and do the attack, or if they uh, do the attack uh, anyway at that place, the first person they can try to kill will be the school resource officer with the gun, because they know that once they take that person out, uh, right. they'll have free reign. The advantage of uh of concealed carry for the teachers uh is that you take away those tactical advantages the attacker doesn't know who they have to worry about who might be able to go and stop them and if you're going to have a school resource officer if you're going to have a police officer there working at the school i have no problem with that that's great but what you have to do is you have to have them blend in so that they're not readily identifiable you have to have them be you know, a regular staff person at the school or something like that so that you take away the tactical advantages that uh, these killers have. Well, also the school officers are human beings. We found out in a lot of school shootings, Vivaldi and other ones, they're cowards at times too. And so they may not decide to go out there and fight somebody right. who has a semi-automatic and all they have is a is a Glock or something. Um, and Well, I mean... The problem that you have, uh, they didn't have school resource officers at Uvalde. What happened is, uh, you know, anybody, it's understandable, even though obviously their job criteria is different, to run into where a gun is. Um, uh, if you're a teacher, though, or somebody there, you don't have that option. You're already there at the school. If you're in a classroom or something and somebody is coming by, uh, you know, you can try to hide behind the desk, I guess, but it's not going to do you much good when you're having to somebody come at you. You have really no alternative but to go and try to protect yourself and others that are there. Right. Well, one thing, too, I want to kind of jump a little bit forward, too, is um, you had a, another good column up before we get to the Venezuelan gangs. You had another good column up, I think, in The Federalist today, where you point out that if, if you're a person trying to get accurate information, number one, you don't want to ask Alexa, because who knows what you'll get there. But but you're, you said that there's clear evidence that the FBI and people are, are scoot, are, 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 are fiddling with statistics to try to make it appear as if like armed civilians don't ever have any kind of impact on stopping crime, right? Right. Well, I mean, uh, there are two cases that I talk about in the piece. One is uh, the CDC a little while ago uh, during the Biden administration took down the information that it had on defensive gun uses. Uh, at the encouragement of uh, the Biden administration uh, politicians, you had uh, uh, the gun control groups were put in touch with the head, head people at the Centers for Disease Control, 
and the gun control groups like the Gun Violence Archive complained that having the CDC have information up there about defensive gun uses made it more difficult for them to get the type of gun control legislation that they wanted passed. Um, and then, as you say, there's also this issue with the FBI. I worked in the Department of Justice for a while in 2020 and 2021. And uh, one of the t assignments that I had was to go and look at these active shooting reports that the FBI puts out. Um, and it's used a lot by the media. It's used in courts. An active shooting case is an instance where a gun is fired in public not part of some other crime like a robbery or a gang fight over drug turf. And it's anything from one person being shot at and missed all the way up to a mass public shooting. And uh, over the 10 years from 2014 to 2023, uh, the FBI claims that there's a little bit over 300 of those cases that occurred in the United States and that only 4% of those uh, involves somebody with a permitted concealed handgun stopping these attacks. Uh, when I was at the Department of Justice, and since then I've been collecting these cases, and it's pretty clear to me that uh, they're missing a huge number of cases, and nobody needs to take my word for this. Uh, on our website at crimeresearch.org, uh, we put together a list of these cases. The thing is, police departments don't collect this data. Uh, the FBI hired some people down at Texas State University uh, to go through and do Google news searches of all things to try to find uh, stories uh, that fit the, this definition of active shooting cases. And I told them then when I was at the Department of Justice and I've told them since then that they're missing a huge number of cases and the cases that they're missing uh, are virtually always cases where somebody with a permanent concealed handgun stopped uh, these active shooting cases. Um, I, I think there's like 180 of them that they've missed. Wow. And rather than having it something like 4% of these active shooting cases uh, were stopped by civilians legally carrying a concealed handgun, I think it's like 36%. But it, it's even worse than that. Oh. Because what the argument that I made to the FBI people was that data people was that, look, these are law abiding citizens. You're talking about uh, stopping these attacks and you can't expect a law abiding person to carry a concealed handgun in a place where they're banned. These gun free yeah. zones where they're banned from right. carrying. It. So right. if you just look at attacks that occur in places where people are legally allowed to carry a gun, over 50% wow. of these active shooting cases were stopped. So that's a lot different than 4%. Yeah. Well, and yeah. Uh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, well, which kind of leads me into sort of the next area I want to talk to you about, which is your column up in Real Clear Politics. I mean, clearly, these are people who are putting politics above safety, above public safety. No, no. I know, it's, it's shocking. And and your, your column, you have, you know, law enforcement collapse, masks, rising crime rates. And I'm sure you've read, because it's been all over here in Colorado, we've had, like in many states and cities, you know, Venezuelan gangs have come here, right? Venezuela released them all out of prison. They come here and they've taken over apartment complexes and there's video of it. And the everybody from the mayor of Aurora, who's kind of coming around, but governor of Colorado, mayor, you know, li Andrew. yeah, liberal, Liberal, liberal media organizations all say, oh, everybody's just racist. This is all of our blown. It's just our imagination. And here, too, they would rather than just go arrest these guys, right? Um, if their pictures are on videotape. All they want to do is, is blame all the people who were talking about it. And I, and I think that's going to be there, too, when you said that the, the collapse masks the crime rates. They want us to pretend that there are no, the crime rates are fine. Anything else is just your imagination, right? Yeah, no, I think that's definitely true. We've heard many times over the last few months that uh, crime is falling. And there have been a number of Democrats out there, uh, you know, during the Democrat National Convention and before and after, who have made the claim that uh, crime has gone down during the Biden administration. And they make an explicit link to the illegal aliens. Uh, they'll go and say, look, 
you've had all these illegal aliens come into the country and crime is down. Uh, so it can't be illegal aliens committing crime. Um, the problem is, is that either these guys just don't understand uh, the crime data, uh, which, or they're just lying. And my own guess is they do understand the crime data. Look, there's two measures that we have of crime or two main measures from the Department of Justice. One is the FBI data on crimes reported to police. Mm -hmm. And the other is something from the Bureau of Justice Statistics, also in the Department of Justice, which is called the National Crime Victimization Survey, which tries to get a handle on both reported and unreported crimes to police. It's a massive survey. I mean, normally people think of a big survey, a huge survey as being 8,000 people or something, but this is a survey of 240,000 wow. people that they do each year, and they've been doing this for 50 years. And uh, uh, normally in the past, before 2020, uh, those two sets of numbers uh, moved up and down together. Uh, since 2020, they've been going in opposite directions every year. Uh, you look at 2022, for example, the last year that we have uh, finalized data from both the FBI and the Bureau of Justice Statistics. While the FBI uh, rate of reported crime, r reported violent crime, fell by 2%, the Bureau of Justice Statistics data showed a 42% increase wow. in, 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 in total violent crime. So during the uh, Biden, during the Trump administration, the Bureau of Justice Statistics data shows violent crime fell by 17 percent, and then it's gone up by 43 percent under the Biden administration. And and there are several reasons for this, and to be concerned about the accuracy of the FBI data. Uh, one is uh, you look at. 2020, for example, 97 percent of police departments reported crime data to the FBI, 10 uh, percent only partially reported it, but uh, you had 97 percent at least report some data. Uh, and uh, but that's started falling dramatically in 2021 and 2022. In 2022, 31 percent of police departments were no longer reporting any crime data wow. to the FBI. Wow. And 24% were only partially reporting data. So you had less than half of police departments in 2022 reporting complete crime data to the FBI. Now, they don't put down zeros for those right. numbers. They kind of guess. And I think they do a pretty bad job of guessing. So that's one problem. But I think there's a more major problem. Okay. And that's, uh, I get at in the piece that you're talking about there. And that is law enforcement has collapsed in this country, particularly in in large cities. Uh, you know, if you just want to take the FBI data, which a lot of the, um, you know, media and the Democrats want to do, uh, in the five years before uh, COVID, uh, the average arrest rate for reported violent crimes was 44%. It started falling in 2020. And by 2022, the average arrest rate for reported violent crimes was 20%. That's wow. over a 50% drop uh, in three years. We've never seen such a drop before. We've never seen such incredibly low uh, arrest rates for reported violent crimes. So that's reported violent crime. Now, not all uh, arrests result in people being charged, let alone prosecuted or convicted. And if you break it down so that you're talking about uh, arrest as a percentage of total violent crime in those cities. Right. It's only about 8%. And for property crimes, the drop was even greater. You had about a 65% drop in the arrest rate for reported property crimes, down wow. to about 4%. And and only 1% of, of total property crimes resulted in arrest. So, you know, again... It's it's kind of hard to look at those numbers and not see law enforcement's collapsed. And, and here's the bottom line. And that is, if I tell you there's a, over a 50% drop in arrests for uh, reported violent crime, 
and a 65% drop in arrests for reported property crime, I assume you're not going to be too surprised if crime increases. Yeah. Just because, <laughs> but people may be less likely to report crimes to the police. You know, one of the things that we know determines whether or not people report crimes to the police is whether they think anything's going to happen, whether they right. think the criminals are going to be caught and, and punished. Right. And and if people don't think that that's going to happen, then uh, what happens is, is that you can have reported crime go down, even though total crime has gone up. Yeah. Well, well I... l- l- let me kind of give you an editorial by the Denver Post in the title. Um, editorial is violent the Venezuelan gang taking over Aurora, question mark. There's no conspiracy to cover the activity of Venezuelan gang in Colorado, um, which is, you know, not to worry. These, these, you guys are just ridiculous. It's your imagination. It's, it's, it's your imagination. It's just, it's sad, of course, that you're, you're such a racist. racist. Uh, And then it goes on to say that, uh, um, basically, I can't find the quote as I never can when I try to get it off the computer. Um, But but it says, um, says Aurora, um, is extremely uh, diverse uh, city of over 400,000 people. The video of armed uh, men with semi-automatic and long guns and pistols in a hallway of an apartment complex and in um, robbing a um, jewelry store are nerving, but they're nerving regardless of who are what the nationality or immigrant status of the <laughs> violators. See, so you can say there's a problem with gang violence, but since all the newcomers are here, they're all Americans. So the idea that you identify them as Venezuelans is is awful. It's racist. We just have to be against gang violence. Well, and nowhere in there do they talk about arresting these people. I mean, and, and I, do you think, John, just sort of final questions, we have to let you go here. I mean, that becomes part of the problem, too. You've got the media, everybody, for whatever reason, is is involved in trying to make us think that what we're experiencing is not happening. Yeah, well, I mean, as I was referring to earlier, you see headlines after headlines that will say things like, Crime is falling, but people erroneously think that it's increasing. Yeah, no morons. And, PR and many other news sources will have those types of headlines. And, and I think it's for two reasons. One is they want to help out the Democrats because one of the big issues, uh, obviously, the big issues are the economy and also crime. But crime is related uh, to the surge of illegal aliens that we have yeah. had come in. And, um, and so they can kind of diffuse. So we, you know, we see similar things with regard to the economy, that the economy is great, right. but people mislead, misleadingly think uh, that it's not. Uh, and, you know, the media is just really in the tank for the Democrats <laughs> on this stuff. I, right. I've had op-eds in the Wall Street Journal and the New York Post and other places, uh, you know, and you know, hopefully just trying to make it so that they couldn't ignore uh, the crime data that's out there. But, you know, you know, right. haven't been too successful in getting them to. Uh, uh, well, let me, you know, well, John, where office. can people see your works? And, 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 and kind of like you say, get the data for themselves. Well, uh, they can go to our website at crimeresearch.org, uh, crimeresearch.org, uh, and you know, if you click on the link on our research, you'll go and you'll find all sorts of data that we have there and links to the underlying government data. If you go down the page a little bit further, you'll see all the different op-eds uh, that we've written in the media places where we've gone and uh, had links to the data and uh, explained the stuff. All right. Well, great to have you, and uh, we'll have you back again. Yeah, so, thank you for keeping track for, of it for us. We appreciate it. All right. Well, thanks for calling. I appreciate it. Sure, of course. Um, Dr. John Lott Jr. there with CrimeResearch.org.